Travis Wingood saw. It occurred to me after I showered and shaved that I forgot to provide this a snapshot of my Stellarium from this morning. Uh, and because uh, I told you about it in the video that ended up going for, what, 30 minutes? So I'll redo that portion for you uh, as I uh, make sure this time I'll put the picture. And I'll try to just talk about this subject. Uh, it's so hard. There's so much stuff to talk about. So, uh, you'll notice I flipped it so that the east is at the bottom. Uh, and the third quarter moon is uh, uh, at uh, Orion. So, Orion uh, looks exactly like a chauffeur horn. And so I, I've noticed that it involves messages. As uh, Joseph Smith's translation of the Bible in Revelation 12 adds, uh, there's a sign in the heaven in the likeness of things on the earth. <coughs> and so there's a, a trumpet blowing today, guys. Uh, and I can assume that it's my lawsuit. But who knows? Uh, it is in conjunction, as you can see. Uh, well, you probably have to blow up your screen on your phones if that's what you're using, rather than a, a computer screen that I'm using. Uh, that uh, Sirius was uh, up in the morning sky. Uh, yeah, I had it at six. I got running late today uh, but by running late I'm able to see Sirius uh, rising in the, in the eastern sky <coughs> as uh, Jupiter has already set Jupiter is Sirius Sirius is a fixed star Jupiter is a wandering star uh, that is able to retrograde within each constellation as it goes around the zodiac uh, for a pregnancy period. Thus, he is whom John the Revelator in chapter 12 is referring to uh, to explain Isaiah's prophecy of a sign of a woman giving birth, conceiving and giving birth. <coughs> and so, uh, and then Matthew, oh, don't, I'm going to go off on a tangent if I talk about Matthew. <laughs> Unbelievable. He turns the prophecy of Isaiah of a sign into a birth. And then, because the Jesus child that he created didn't fulfill prophecy, he then says in Matthew 24, Oh, by the way, his sign that I already gave you at the beginning of the book, it's going to be in the future. <laughs> And so everybody is all, oh, nobody knows the day or the hour. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Matthew, how could you have fallen so hard? <laughs> you sought to convert Jews, and you failed miserably. <clears throat> yeah, so that's why Jews don't believe in the Gospels, Jesus, as their God. And then Constantine, well, it could have been Constantine that caused Matthew, but, <laughs> oh my God. Uh, and so, <laughs> uh, and so, <laughs> I can't be serious about Sirius. <laughs> serious. <clears throat> so serious, as you notice, is being pointed to by the three wise men, the belt of Orion, and uh, it's not three wise men in the Gospels narrative, it just says wise men come to Herod, um, but it's been a traditional understood, oh, it's referring to the sign in the heavens of Orion pointing to Sirius. <sighs> and so yes, the Book of Mormon also talks about the sign of the Son of Man as well. Uh, but this, that's Jupiter. 
and Jupiter has now set in the morning and twilight and so uh, Jupiter uh, is now the star of the night and now Sirius is now rising as trying to compete against Venus to become the morning sun the son of God the son Amun. sound familiar Mormons do I need to remind you where they are in the Doctrine and Covenants there's two locations including a third one which refers to uh, Father Amun as Adam on Di Amun. And so I do remember one of them being in section 95, but we'll search. And because Adam on Di Amun has the hyphen things, the program doesn't recognize that one. So 7820. Uh, and saith your Redeemer, even the Son, Amen, who prepareth all things before he taketh you. And then in 9517, uh, saith Son, Amen, or in other words, Alpha, or in other words, Omega. Omega, by the way, I've deciphered Paleo Hebrew, uh, which comes from uh, different Egyptian picture glyphs uh, than William Foxwell Albright's. Unbelievable. How could he have been so popular? Anyway, he's now dead, so I can't. These, I can't confront him to say, "Man, you were dumb. What are you thinking?" Uh, and so, uh, yeah, the uh, sunstone is Sun Amun. So, notice on the Navu Temple, the sunstones with Lucifer above them. Oh, yay! Lucifer dominated the sunstone. Sun Amun. Yay! <clears throat> and Mormons want to call the inverted pentagram the Jesus symbol instead of the sunstone symbol. Uh, uh, anyway. And so, yes, even Jesus Christ your Lord. So it's not Jesus Christ, it's Amun. That's our God, Mormons. And it's under the learning of the Jews. Remember the whole Book of Mormon thing? Learning of the Jews, language of the Egyptians. Amun comes from the Egyptian sun god of noonday. Amun! And uh, there's more I can go into that with Bible uh, corrected translations, but such as Shem, the name, refers to Amun in the Egyptian. Uh, Ogdod creation glyph. Uh, anyway, so Venus, Lucifer, Latin. Latin Vulgate introduces Venus as Lucifer. Uh, the Hebrew version that came out 500 years after, 400 years after, well, probably 500, uh, gave us a different word. Uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls, I think conforms to the uh, Hebrew uh, version rather than the Latin Vulgate version. Uh, and so, uh, uh, but nonetheless, Latin Vulgate is the source for Lucifer, which is uh, Venus, as understood. The morning star. Not to be confused with uh, Revelation 26. That's referring to the sun, that star of the Jews. The morning, uh, Kefri, <coughs> uh, of the Egyptians. Sun Amun. And so, Sun Amun in the morning, Amun at noon, and deceased Amun at evening tide. And so Venus and Sirius are competing. They're battling it out to be Amun at noonday. They're both rising right now as we are reenacting that Egyptian story between Horus and Set. And uh, because Sirius is a fixed star, it's always in that position. Always. As our Earth 
continues to revolve, Sirius is always in that location in space. Venus, however, is not. Venus, as a planet going around the sun, thus goes around the zodiac, as we see it go around the zodiac from Earth. And so, uh, right now, uh, and you can see it, I think it's about to enter into the Crab Nebula of Cancer, or leaving Cancer. Uh, it's in the proximity of Cancer. Uh, and so, like I said, the moon, third quarter moon, the moon is symbolic of religion. Sun is symbolic of government. The Christ, the anointed one. And so the moon is high priesthood, the priesthood of Amun. <coughs> and, uh, and it's now the moon, the third quarter moon, as a crescent, as it's uh, waning and nearing the sun where it'll become a new moon, it's with the chauffeur horn of Orion, which is Osiris in Egyptian. And Osiris has its three stars pointing to Sirius, who is his son. And then Isis stands on top of Sirius, but we uh, don't include Isis as a constellation anymore. Uh, and and uh, it, looking at it, it's almost a dark void in comparison with the other stars in the sky. Uh, and that may be why we no longer have Isis as a constellation. But uh, I, what else do I need to go over with this? Uh, for tomorrow, the moon will still be in the the range of the horn. So today and tomorrow is the religious announcement. That's why I'm saying it could be related to my uh, filing of the lawsuit against the church. Part dos, dos sequis. And, uh, and, and so, uh, yeah, it's about the competition between who's going to win out. And so, yes, what symbol does the church have? The Illuminati symbol of Venus, the inverted pentagram of Lucifer. And it's on their temple, it's on their Nauvoo temple, conquering Joseph Smith and Hiram. And it's on the Seagull Gate, conquering the government of Utah, as that's what my complaint is about. Hey, you guys are, are uh, not following the law and giving loyalty to a terrorist group. And so, uh, the church does not belong to the current administration. And so, yes, Sirius and Venus, the battle is in the likeness of things on the earth. The sign. And so, unless something else happens uh, to make it a, a dual prophecy or dual interpretation of the sign and today, we'll have to find out. But uh, as far as I know, I'm the only one who's standing up to the abuse of the church. Uh, to say, let my Mormons go. Let my people go. Way down. Moses. Tribute to the late, great uh, Louis Armstrong. Alrighty. So, yeah, that's, that's where the whole wise men thing comes from, guys. We saw his, saw his star in the east. Yeah, of course you did. So, alrighty. We're done.